But I'm seeing some people getting stuck with the same thing. First of all, we haven't looked at constraints, hence one of the reasons why I wanted to do a problem like this. This constraints is a little bit different. All right. Now, you guys can, we know that this is a quadratic. We have no idea what the quadratic looks like. And then we know this is some kind of line. Right? So I'm just going to kind of give you guys a visual representation of the graph. It looks something like that, roughly. Okay? Now, we know that we're only taking the graph from 0 to 2, or we're taking this graph, and let's just pretend 2 is right here. So everything to the left of 0 is basically not a part of this graph. So from 0 to 2, we're going this graph. And then from 2 to 6, we have this graph. Now, 0 to 2, that's included. And then this one is a whole. We want to be able to see, basically, you know, are these connected or not? right? So we want to see, do these equal each other? Now again, to check our continuity, what, basically what we want to be able to do between these values is check where they could be discontinuous, which is going to be at the point of 2. So we need to check continuity at 2. So I'm going to say continuity. And for continuity, that means ax squared minus 2 has to equal bx plus 6 at x equals 2. So we're going to enter in 2. a times 2 squared minus 2 equals b times 2 plus 6. Go ahead and simplify. You get 4a minus 2 equals 2b plus 6. Um, we could simplify this. Usually, we want to get the variables to the same side. So I'll subtract a 2b, and I'll add a 2 on both sides. So I have 4a minus 2b equals 8. That is my equation number 1. However, it's one equation that I have two unknowns. That means I need to be able to find another equation. right? So again, proving differentiability, we got to have something continuous, but we don't have enough information right now to show that this is continuous. But if it's, continuous, if it's differentiable, that means also the derivative exists on the left and the right-hand side. And that was something else we wrote down. Remember, for the derivative to exist, the derivative on the left, the derivative on both sides need to, needs to exist. So we're going to check differentiability, or if they're differentiable. So to do that, we're going to take the derivative of the top, which is just going to be 2a, constant goes to 0, has to equal b at x equals 2. So we have 2a times 2 equals b. 4a minus b equals 0. That's my second equation. Yes, no, maybe so. What else would you like to do? But how are you, what else are you going to do to check the continuity? Like, what are you thinking? What came to your brain to do? That's what I'm asking. I thought putting on both variables at the same time. I just, um, I saw the equation for A, and then I plugged in the equation for B, and then I plugged in the equation for B, and then I plugged But the problem is you don't know what, you're, if you solve for A, though, in this equation, you're going to have it equal to B. Right? But yeah, and then you'd have to still, you're still setting them equal to each other. So yeah, um, you're still plugging them in to go and set them equal to each other. But then you're, and then what you evaluated for B? And then you solve for, solve for B? At two? Well, let's go and take a look. I'll, I'll, OK. Well. Uh, well, I'll go and take a look at what you, um, what you did as well. Um, but now that we have a systems of equations, we can identify a and b. So we can say 4a minus b equals 0, and then 4a minus 2b equals 0. Well, this is just a system of equations. I can subtract 
the two equations. 4a minus 4a is 0a. Minus, negative b minus a positive 2b. That's a double negative, so that turns to b. 0 minus 0 is um, going to be 0. So b equals 0. Huh? No, it's 4a minus 4a. They're both positive. Yeah, continuity. Did I mess up? Oh, equals 8. Thank you. Which way occurs in that? 8. So then b equals 0 minus 8 is negative 8. Right? All right, so b equals negative 8. And then I can go back to one of these equations. Doesn't matter which one. Let's plug it into this one. That seems a little bit simpler. 4a minus negative 8 equals 0. 4a plus 8 equals 0. Minus 8, minus 8. 4a equals negative 8. Divide by 4, divide by 4. a equals negative 2. So therefore, the two values, which I would write down on a normal, like, on a normal test where I was showing my work, Jesse, I would write down um, a or b are the two values, um, or negative 2 and negative 8 are the two values for a and b that make the function both continuous and differentiable. And actually, let's just go back and check. Let's plug in a into this and make sure we have this. So therefore, 4 times 2 is negative 8. Negative 2 times b is going to be a positive 16. Is negative 8 plus 16 equal to 8? Right? So those values work for our continuity. Correct? 